Hey, Zach, how's it going? All right, I guess. I'm sick. Hey, Got me too. I get I get sick just earlier this week. I, I went to a con and <laughs> and caught the caught the it, the it. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> I don't, I don't yeah. think I did anything to deserve this. I didn't go anywhere. I didn't get anything for it. Wow, you just you just got punished, I guess. Yeah. Well, well, thank. Uh, I guess thankfully for days off. I mean, actually, it wasn't really because I don't I don't like taking sick days uh, right. when I can help it, but. I was able to watch a beautiful film that I had watched many times since my childhood. Yeah. And you also watched this film. If you've clicked on this video, you know we're going to talk about Star Wars, the original film, also known as Episode Four: A New Hope. Um, this is the film George Lucas directed in 1977 uh, and wrote the script for as well. Mm -hmm. Um this is a film, a film series. We're gonna we're gonna be doing kind of a lead up to uh, episode nine, which is releasing next month. Yeah. Um, every Star Wars. I have to movie. say, we're gonna be reviewing every Star Wars movie, not including the Star Wars: The Clone Wars, which is theatrically released in like two thousand nine, I think, uh -huh. which was like the pre or two thousand eight, which was the precursor to the Clone Wars cartoon, which is also very good and highly recommend watching that. But, uh, no, we're going to be talking about just the films. Uh, it, we are going to include the spinoffs as well, so we're going to talk about Solo and Rogue One. Starting off pretty strong here, though, with, uh, with a very very near and dear to my heart. Uh, I don't know about you, but I certainly grew up with Star Wars. Uh, very prevalent in my household. My brother read a lot of the Extended Universe books. He has like all of, like the, the like, X-Wing Rogue Squadron books. Uh, we had Star Wars video games, Star Wars action figures, Star Wars everything. We 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 definitely like the Star Wars in in our house. So, um, yeah, I mean, it should be said that I'm kind of like a complete Star Wars casual, and I'm like <laughs> I've I've surface level Star Wars knowledge, and even though like I grew up around Survivor, or. <laughs> Survivor. Survivor, yes. Wow. Even though I grew up okay. around Survivor, Star Wars also Star Wars existed. Star Wars is always just like yeah. <laughs> Star Wars has also just existed. Even I guess. I grew up around Star Wars. Uh, for some reason, it doesn't have the same nostalgia for me. And like recently, in, like the past year or two, my brother and I went back and we watched episodes like four and five together. I don't know if we ever got to six, mm. but other than that, it's, it's been years since I've seen any of them. And like my earliest memories of Star Wars are probably the prequels. Because that's yeah, like when I grew up. Yeah, I mean, I can remember episode one. Like, we we'll talk about that more when we get when we get there. But, um, yeah, I remember just the mania behind that um, when I was a little kid. But, um, but I've never but yeah, been uh, I've never been deep into the Star Wars lore. Okay, I've always I've always appreciated it, and like, I like seeing Star Wars fans, you mm -hmm. know, going crazy over it, but. I know. I, no, I was like, I was the one who suggested. Those people are a little embarrassing. Not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> I was the one who suggested let's go through all the Star Wars movies, even though I'm like the last person who should be talking about Star Wars. But it's like, yeah, it's I kind of interesting that <laughs> it's kind of interesting that you said that you suggest. You're the one that suggested that, even though I'm probably more of the more of the Star Wars fan. But yeah, but yeah, um, yeah. It had actually been a while since I'd seen the original film as well. It's actually been a while since I've seen. Pretty much any any of them except for the sequels, um, the sequel trilogy films. Um, I was trying to think of when I when I was watching. I was trying to think of what the last time I watched uh, episode four was, and I think it was in college. I think it was. Um, I watched it. <laughs> yeah, I think the last time was in college. My uh, my senior year. We did. We always do every year. We always did a May the Fourth. Uh, marathon, and I think that year we did a we did Machete Order, um, which is watching the movies four, five, two, three, six. So you cut the one out. <laughs> that's that's the machete. That's what you're cutting out. Wow. So, um, and it was that was interesting. It was it was a it was certainly a way to watch them. Um, but. Uh, but yeah, it'd probably been since then, since I'd seen episode four. So, um, but, coming yeah. back to it again, yeah, was very refreshing. Kind of, I kind of fell in love with the whole, with the whole, everything about it again once more. Like there was new magic 
It might have been that might have been that I was sick. But there was I don't know. It felt like it felt like coming home again to an old friend that you hadn't seen in a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, there's just something very like there's a nostalgia to it, but there's something that very just like warm and and man, you're getting all the notifications. <laughs> Just something like warm and and like comforting about the original film. Um, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but I, certainly that's 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 how I felt about it. Um, but uh, and it been so it had been a long time for you too, and you said so. Kinda, it had, how, it how kind of it had been a long time, and then I watched it like maybe last year or earlier, okay. even early this year with my brother. Okay, but it was probably last year at least. Yeah, um, but how but is it coming so, back to it again? I mean, it's weird for me watching a movie like this, which is clearly it's like I should be nostalgic for it, but I'm not really. So it's not; mm-hmm. it doesn't feel as special, you know. It's like yeah. I know this is Star Wars. I know this is like where so many people fell in love with it, but it doesn't mm-hmm. do the same thing for me. I'm just like, okay, it's good, <laughs> it's good, <laughs> good movie, but it's like after seeing. Like coming into Star Wars, uh, after like, there have been so many movies out, and like yeah. after my childhood, like I, I didn't really delve into the movies until it was all already like the whole library out pretty much. So yeah, it's not like the same special feeling of discovering it for the first time. Kind of, it's just you know, it's just weird. It's so weird to watch now because it's uh. Some of the stuff isn't like perfect, uh, like up to today's standards, but uh, I know it's supposed to be, you know, it was great for the time. Yeah, and... it's the, it was the magic of 1977, the summer where literally everything happened and came out. Yeah. One of those, some of the reasons why I haven't watched it recently, um, and we'll probably surely talk about this more often. We'll talk about this often, I'm sure, on on this retrospective. At least I, I'm going to bring it up. <laughs> Is the fact that um, these movies have changed over time? This isn't the same. Hmm. The e- the most easily accessible versions of this movie is not the same movie that came out in 1977. Mm-hmm. We don't have a high definition transfer of that version of the film. We have high definition transfers of what George Lucas had directed Lucasfilm to change. Um, right. He did it once in 1997, and he well, he actually changed the the cha- film actually did change in the early '80s when they added Episode Four, A New Hope, to the title crawl. But that's kind of minor. I, I mean, that's nothing really. That's that's that major to me. But um, but things like adding new scenes, adding special, uh, updating the special yeah. effects more than more than once because he did it in '77, did it in 2004, and then did it again in 2011 changing things adding new content that's not the same movie and there's i can kind of like understand like an artist coming to his work and not being satisfied with it um but it's very different to me an artist coming to his work and saying you're not allowed to like this thing anymore you're not allowed to watch this anymore you have to watch it the way i want you to look at it Hmm. when there's a lot. I, I'm not gonna say like it's the vast majority of fans. I'd say it's probably, it's probably ultimately a vocal minority. But I think it's an important facet of the fan base that says, "No, you, George Lucas, were for the preservation of film. You were against films being colorized. You testified to Congress, among many of your other f- film peers, that colorizing film is detrimental to its preservation. And yet, here you are going with your own movies." And kind of doing the same kind of thing. I mean, it is your movie. At least the first one is your movie. Star Wars is his movie, but the six uh, episodes five and six aren't his movies. He didn't direct them. So there's there's a problem I have with. And I, I th- again, I think that's probably why it's been a while since I've watched it. There just hasn't been the version of Star Wars that I wanted to see readily available. Mm-hmm. Um. And as Disney Plus is, is looming, I, I'm probably going to... I might bite the bullet and watch 5 and 6, the Blu-ray way. I'm not going to be happy about it. Um, mm-hmm. But there are ways of watching the films. Uh, there have been fan projects aplenty to watch the films that they basically take the transfers 
take original film prints and sort of combine them together to kind of like quote unquote de-specialize the movies. Um, and of course, they're they're obviously very upfront about the fact that they are fan projects that you and they they make and they, in fact they make the steps to watch these very difficult because they don't want you just pirating the film. They don't want just anyone coming along and pirating the film. They want you to buy at least buy the Blu-rays, buy whatever means you can of watching the films before you are go forward and go through the 10,000 step process in order to actually watch the films that way. I ran out of time and I didn't have the means to do so. So I ultimately watched a kind of chopped together sort of version, which was mm-hmm. kind of part of the despecialized, but then other scenes where they did have the, the, the like edits from the, from the new version. So it was kind of like, uh, kind of piecemeal but ultimately i felt like because they didn't have like the job of the hut scene added in they didn't have um the random just crap in front of the screen uh as they're they're going around my size lee um because he just added in like tons of like creatures and stuff in front of the, the oh, yeah. lens and it's just like very distracting weird um so i didn't have any of that so that was kind of nice um the explosions were of course the the comically large like ring explosions that mm. he seems to really like um <laughs> but uh like the one of alderaan is just like it's just like almost uh, almost funny to me <laughs> just because it's just like it's just like that doesn't no like come on <laughs> mm. all that aside um all, all my gripes with with lucas tooling around with with stuff the film still left me with the fuzzies and it still left me with um with a good feeling, I guess. So, um, so I, I guess, I don't know. We'll, we'll kind of break down a little bit. We're not, we won't go into tons of detail. Everybody's seen these movies. Theoretically, if you're watching this video, you've probably seen star Wars and new hope. Yeah. yeah someone's going to come um, watch this before. Be like, watch what? It for the who, first time. Who is, what is star? What is this star Wars? You've talked about. Yeah. It's everywhere. Now you can't escape it. You can't get away from it. It's almost a disease now. The, the disease that me and you caught, apparently. Oh, yeah. um, uh, Star Wars is that disease. Um, so, I don't know, what are your kind of, what are your general thoughts? You said it's just kind of like, yeah, it's fine. I, it's a good movie, I guess. So, like, like I don't know, like, just yeah. some general analysis about it. I don't like, know. What it's are like... some things that you liked or didn't like about it upon rewatching? I was going to Tashi Station to pick up more power converters. You can, you can fool around with your friends later. <laughs> I was just... I'm kind of, like, going into this where it's, like... In terms of giving it a score, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to let... I want to let you convince me to uh, change my score, because... Oh, okay. I don't... Oh. <laughs> I didn't know we were going to be scoring these. This is going to be hard for me. Right. Because I've got, I've got tar- nostalgia of the tar- buzzer. around review. <laughs> yeah, because I don't have a lens of... Mm-hmm. And I don't know, like, how much to overanalyze certain things, you know? Um... And kind of, like, I would like to hear why this movie, other than it being nostalgic, why the movie is so good on the, the fundamentals of, like, a good, being a, a great film, you know? Okay. Okay, so you, you want me to, like, to try to convince you? Yeah. Sort of? Okay, well, some of the things that I really like about this movie, um, a lot, um, and the sequels are, are great in their own right, and I... We'll get to my favorite movie uh, eventually in the in the series. Um, this is a this is probably number two. I want to say, um, uh, especially on rewatching, I think it kind of solidified his places. Yeah, I, this is probably probably number two. Um, this this movie to me is like the it's kind of like the textbook definition of to me for of like art through adversity. Um, if you, if you've heard anything about the making of this film, you know, it was fraught with technical difficulties, uh, when they were filming in Tunisia, doing all the stuff on Tatooine, it was just like problem after problem, stuff getting destroyed, things not working. Um, they, there were problems with the scripts not making any sense and the actors not really liking any of the stuff that they're saying. Sir Alec Guinness was not overly thrilled with um, 
mean, he was he was in the role, but like he's he, upon retrospect uh, his reflection, he was never overly keen on the Star Wars movies, mm. um, and th- there was just a lot a lot going against it. It was George Lucas as an independent filmmaker; he wasn't attached to a studio. Um, he was just kind of going and doing this throwback to old like 1930s space serials like flash gordon or you know any of the uh, that's he's the first the first that's the only one that really comes to mind but in the 30s there were a lot of a lot of like sci-fi kind of serials like this and this was sort of a a look back to some of those um but rejuvenated replenished um really propped up uh and and using cutting edge technology at the time um so its technical aspects are, I mean, they're archaic by today's standards, but if you're looking at back then, you're just like, I can't believe they were able to do some of this stuff in 1977. Um, the lightsaber effects, all of the modeling, all of the artistry that went into uh, filming the, all the, the spaceship battles, the X-Wing, the, X, the Death Star run, um the even the the uh tent of four uh versus the 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 the, you know the star destroyer chasing the the frigate or the corvette i think is what it is um and that whole that whole chase sequence all the modeling all the special effects that had to do with that um the explosions which are of course now uh completely different from from when they were in 77 but um a lot of those technical aspects were just very impressive and there was a lot of time and hard work and it really pays off in the finished product. Um, you can tell that the people who were making it were passionate about it. Um, another thing that the film has going for it is that it has a cohesive, understandable, simple, but relatable narrative. Um, which apparently during filming it didn't really have. Um, the story was kind of all over the place. There, there's the the phrase "Star Wars was saved" in the editing. Mm-hmm. From what I can tell, is by all, all intents and purposes is totally true. Um, uh, there was a line in um, after the after the Tie Fighter chase uh, in the Millennium Falcon after they escaped the Death Star. There was some exchange between Han and Luke where Luke said this stupid, like, horribly clunky, terrible line. It was just, like, evidence that we'll see later on. George Lucas does not know how to write dialogue that Hmm. sounds like people talking. And that was the problem. Uh, Like, Mark Hamill begged, and he even, he can still, like, quote the, quote the line, like, to this day. Because it, it was just like so memorably bad, um, and it was just like people don't talk like this, and pretty much the whole movie is free from any weird. I mean, there's there's obviously like some technical jargon that gets lost over time, or or, or kind of like slips through the cracks, or just kind of like what, or weird things like that. But it's um, it's just it's a simple science fiction plot. Farm boy gets uh, a call to adventure. He gets swept up into a great uh, uh, conflict that's a lot greater than he is. Uh, goes off on an adventure with his mentor. Uh, his mentor is killed, but that leads him to become a better person. He rises to a- rises to the action. His call, his calling. He doesn't reject it. He rises to it. Um, and, uh, and he's, he's ultimately able to overcome and, uh, and succeed. And it's a, it's just a nice, succinct coming of age story with the backdrop of a space opera. Um, and of course it's accompanied by one of the greatest film scores ever, ever made. Like, honestly, this movie would be watching it again. This movie would be kind of not as, not nearly as good as it is without the music of John Williams. It's just like it never fails to hit the right emotional tone when it needs to. Um, even when stuff's a little hokey, even when stuff's a little corny, that score 
kind of it adds an it adds a tone of like maturity to it i guess would be kind of like how i'd describe it it's it takes the material seriously the the music reinforces the fact that yes this is fantastical but because it has this kind of level of a score it, it's you should take it so you the audience kind of subliminally are taking it seriously because it has a heady or fun depending on what the track is uh musical score backing it um as well written characters um very plain and uh well delivered motivations um the empire wants to stop the rebels from finding a way to stop their super weapon and the bad guys are clearly very powerful and have the the rebels are all in hiding they've got the little secluded base and they're trying to locate where the base is so even if those plans get out of their hands because they they were stolen they can at least wipe the the resistance the rebels out before they can they can have any any sort of repercussions of the of the plans being stolen so yeah i i don't know it's if i feel like i'm doing my best here but uh that's that's kind of what i got i mean a, a lot of it comes down to a lot of what makes this movie kind of impressive is just how visually striking it is um there weren't tons of movies that were looked that looked like this then you did have sci-fi coming out around this year around this era but nothing really quite had at the same time it feels fresh but it also feels lived in it's not shiny and new like a lot of science fiction was it's all yeah these are just like real people and they're you know they're in a it, it like feels desert, like a, desert planets it's a it's a desert planet things are all going to get sandy and look kind of like dingy and run down um spaceships aren't going to necessarily work all right of course um yeah you got rusty you old droids the rusty old droids uh that, i that's one thing upon watching this again i loved how like how just beaten up and damaged 3po and r2d2 looked from the beginning mm-hmm. um even though even after they get like clean they still look run down and they're not like they're not all shiny and new until the very end of the movie when when they're having the the big celebration the so um yeah uh just a lot of a lot of effort went into making the world feel greater than what we see on on screen and i think i think that's one of its greatest strengths is that it 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 kind of gives you a gives you a, a small bit of a huge universe that allows your own imagination to kind of run rampant that's that's in one essence that's kind of why some of the extended universe stuff is a little I don't want to say it betrays the vision of that but it's like it makes the universe feel feel a little smaller when you when you keep explaining everything um but I mean to its to its benefit there's there's been plenty of interesting stories and and worlds and narratives to tell in that universe so hmm. um yeah no, I mean, uh, yeah, I think it's great. I just I want to give it as much credit as possible for being the inception of this series at a time where you know I I discovered it well after it had already been created, so it doesn't have the same imp- impact on me as it did when it first came out. You know, it should get like a, yeah. a bit of a multiplier for that because literally this huge franchise yeah. was born from this. Yeah, pop culture arguably was begun by George Lucas and Steven Spielberg. <laughs> yeah. Um in their films in the in the seventies and eighties. So I do think uh Luke Skywalker's a little whiny though. Like uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, feel he's... like if he was introduced today people would just like be hating on Luke Skywalker all the time. Like you'd get so many of like <laughs> like Twitter people just like trashing him on Twitter. <laughs> he would just get trapped. Yeah. Like, what a what a whiny loser. Yeah. I I upon upon watching it because like I've always found Luke Skywalker relatable. I I've always like really, I I like his growth, especially just in this movie. Even is really great. Um, but I I do. I've always kind of related to it. It's like, 
but at the same time, I think it's just because it's that period of time. I feel like a character like that is would be more relatable. Like he's like, oh man, you know, this is pa- you know, his parent figures are kind of holding him down. He wants to go out and see the world. You know, I you can kind of jive with that. But like, <clears throat> there have been so many movies that have done a coming of age sort of thing like that, where it's a, a character feeling like he's he's not doing, he's he's not living up to the potential that he feels like he could he could be. Um, and have done it in a more modern more modern approaches. You know, as time has gone on, as modernity has progressed, Just like, to Mo- like Moana, different places. Just like yeah, Moana. Like Mo- yeah, Moana is, the, I mean... It's the modern episode four. It's the modern A New Hope. Yeah. I mean, I mean a lot of a lot of road trip movies, which Moana is basically a, a ocean trip movie, um, a lot of them have that kind of thing. And, and, and it all goes back to the whole um, the hero's journey paradigm, which has been, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's the... It's the... Uh, the framework around which many of... Not just Star Wars. Star Wars does it, it like does it like almost to the T. Um, but yeah, like a lot of we have your stories, perfect, yeah, perfect archetypes. And it's it's the, it's the archetypes. Yeah, it's the the hero's journey is the wise old man. Yeah, is yeah, the sage. Man. Yeah, and uh, the call to action. Um, yeah, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and a lot of that is is can be tracked throughout human history. We all have stories. We've been telling stories as long as we have been able to um, that follow to a degree, that kind of, of, of archetype. And I think that he, uh, he distilled and refined and just did it just about as well as you possibly could have in the, with the, with his universe and setting, I think. Um, so, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, what else to be is there to be said? Do you want to do you want to give it a score? Uh, I mean, like, I feel like my score doesn't even matter because, <laughs> like, matter. I want to just, I, like, I don't know. I mean, like, it's hard to really, it's hard to separate my feelings of it as as a child, right? With like, because because now now I feel I feel like I can analyze more of the technical aspects of the film a lot better, so I feel like. I have only come to appreciate the movie more as I've grown, as I've grown up. Coming to appreciate the how, okay. how just how simple and effective the storytelling is and the writing. I mean, give it. You know, he's he might not be very skilled at at making believable dialogue, but the way it was delivered and the way it, it plays out in the movie that we see is great. I mean, the the movie is. I quote the movie like all the time with, among my, you know with my brothers. This this and some of the other Star Wars films. I mean, some of it is just the fact that we are a Star Wars family. We're also a Star Trek family, but that's mm. that's another story. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's hard. It's hard for me to really like actually give it a, a fair score. I guess you could say. I'm I'm honestly more curious as to as to your sort of thoughts about it i know i've talked a lot about this because i have the most <laughs> mm-hmm. history with the star wars well, but i wanted you to have this i want you to have this platform you know okay <laughs> yeah i mean that's kind of what it's turning into now <laughs> <laughs> i honestly it's like for some reason i've always said not not too much i haven't been too opinionated on star wars in general but it's yeah. obviously a solid movie i mean the in the music's amazing and Luke Skywalker's whiny, but it's uh, but he grows up. He grows great, up just in this movie. It's a great a arc, bit. yeah, great arc. And I mean, all those, st- all the characters have great arcs, right? Especially Luke yeah. Skywalker from Episode Four to Episode Eight. Um, it's a great arc. Um, so yeah, we'll get to that. <laughs> um, but I get, I can give it a score first, but okay. Um, yeah, it's hard to say. It's also like the first Tarkaron review we've done of like stuff we've seen before. Mm. Um, it's usually brand new stuff to us each time. It's easier to review something that doesn't have so much of a legacy and that you specifically, you have so much of a personal stake in, (laughs) uh, 
I mean, like, I, honestly, if you give it like a, a five, I probably wouldn't even be like, okay, well, I guess it's just not for you. Five whatever. out of ten. <laughs> 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 yeah, what's well, so, so around three? Um, yeah. <laughs> Eight, Ultimately, uh, 8. 5. Sonic and Okay, yeah. yeah. See, I, I, I yeah. Well, I want to give some wiggle room because there will be some that are above it and yeah, some below it. So yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I'll probably just give it a nine. Again, same same reason. Gonna as get you. a lot of nines from you, probably. Little little wiggle room. I, I mean, I love this year well hmm, there'll be some there'll be some movies that will not get some nine <laughs> let me tell you there'll be some movies there'll be i have some i have some thoughts yeah. about the prequels let me tell you the prequels okay. so yeah also, and the sequels honestly i mean the prequels will be interesting because <laughs> like that's my earliest memories of star wars but i haven't seen those yeah. since since i was young like i've never went back and watched oh it's been them. it's been i probably haven't seen episode one since i saw i went and saw it in 3d Remember when they were going to transfer yeah. all the Star Wars films into 3D, and that was the only one they ever released? Mm. It was the only one I went and saw. That's right, yeah. So I went and saw it in theaters. I was, I was like, man, this feels like a kid again. Except now I, now I have a better perspective on how, how this movie is. I won't tell you my opinion. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah, of course, complete, completely undetermined. So what? So eight point five nine. So eight point seventy five yeah. out of ten it's, for Tarkon. It's just a wonderful adventure film it has pretty much anything you everything you could want in it in it i think any anyone a moviegoer could want you've got you get great it? costumes if you're into that okay you get great music stunning visuals uh a really a simple and easily digestible and followable story uh you got uh, uh good looking han solo uh he's the he's the rogue and uh you know he's he's dashing and kind of has that dark streak um, you got the, the, the chipper young boy who grows up, uh, and then you got, uh, Leia, who's the, the very sassy and, uh, no nonsense princess who is just very confident. This is and... jumping this trash can back there. Yeah. She's just like, yeah. She's like, once I'm freed, she's like, okay, that's pretty much all I needed. And now I can run the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what docks it a point for you? What makes Avengers Endgame? Better than Star Wars: A New Hope. Point five higher. I mean, like what honestly, makes the silent voice. Those, that's the thing. You can't transfer those. You can't. You can't compare. It's They're completely different comparable. movies. <laughs> yeah. When you come that's out, what, that's what I mean. Points, when you, when points you only come mean out, so much. When you come out and say Pokemon Sword and Shield is a nine out of ten, I'm be like, oh, it's same, just as good as uh, Star Wars: A New Hope, huh? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. But what docks at a whole point? Is it just? Uh, I mean, maybe it's maybe. Maybe to me, I don't know. What, what what's a ten out of ten movie to you? Do you have we'll a ten to... out of ten movie? Yeah, okay. I do. We'll get to that one. All right. Well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'll ever rate anything ten out of ten, but we'll see. There is no perfect movie. That's like my uh, English teacher in middle school. Oh no, I I totally agree. My ten out of ten would is not is not a perfect movie by any means. But my English teacher in middle school, the most she would give is a ninety nine because she's like, there is no perfect paper. <laughs> okay, well the paper, I guess I can kind of understand that. And I got cucked. I'm getting ninety nines out here. <laughs> <laughs> you can give me that hundred. I want that hundred. All right. Well, yeah. that's it. Eight point seventy five well, out of ten, so. which puts it. Uh, <laughs> what does it put it under? It puts it under Avengers, a Silent Avengers Voice, Avengers, and a Silent Voice. Probably something else too, but I don't remember what. Yeah, it's a good movie. If you haven't seen it, watch it again before the before uh, before it comes out. Watch it T Specialized if you can get it. If you own it legally, do it because yeah, it's this. honestly it's worth it's worth seeing. Watch on Disney Plus if you don't care about that sort of thing. But if you're somebody like me that wants to try to preserve film hopefully yeah. now that fox and disney are one in the same who knows maybe we'll see we'll see a a finally wonderful transfer of this movie unedited yeah and uh i don't know hopefully i mean for crying out loud i i've been this is kind of an aside but i've been watching james bond movies and those have like you know those have a digital restoration uh i think some of them have 4k restoration but like watching those movies, like they look practically brand new, and their special effects aren't like that great. Like it's from the '60s onward, and watching it in 1080p, it's amazing. 
how good those movies look. Mm. And if and I just want to watch Star Wars like that. I want to watch the original movie, digitally restored. That's that's fine. You can just just do yeah. that. Anyway. So yeah, eight point seventy five <laughs> puts it under Avengers Endgame, The Haunting of Hill House, Goodwill oh. Hunting. Stranger yeah. Things three and a silent voice, of course. Wow, I do hope the... you, you gotta you gotta you gotta flex those muscles a little more. It looks like all right. I, I can just tank all these scores. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. Well, thanks well, for watching. Yeah. See you next time. Where we'll be back with the Empire Strikes Back. Yes. We'll strike back. We Woo! will do that. Charge strikes back forward. <laughs>